Hi everybody, this is RB3 coming at you with the next video that we're uploading from the Schmoes Plus YouTube channel, re-uploading here to the SK Podcast channel. And in this video, we have an exclusive look at Mark Ellis and some of other Schmoes may be showing up in this video before, during, and after his headlining set in San Diego about four years ago. Um, the interview was conducted by Christian Spicer who is a very funny YouTuber himself. You should look him up, check out his stuff. He has some good stuff on his channel. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There I am. Hey everybody, uh, Christian Spicer here with Stats Comedy Night Vlog. We actually got everybody in the room. We can pan around and see everybody. There we go. Say hello, say your name, what are you doing? What's up, I'm Josh McCuga. Doing what, some stand-up tonight. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, at Josh McCuga. J-O-S-H-M-A-C-U-G-A. You can follow me at youtube.com backslash the casual mafia as well. Look at this guy busting it out. Justine, Hi. give us your 411s. My four, I, Justine Marino. I'm tweeting from my Twitter handle right now at Justine Machine. I'm writing some gems here <laughs> if you want to get in on it. Immediately, I suggest that. This is a live um, show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you should also listen to my podcast, Three's Too Much. All of is, our podcasts, which Three's I do Too with Much. with these two fucks. Um, and it's on the ToadHopNetwork.com. Oh my god, and there he is. Oh, are my openers done whoring themselves out? <laughs> hey, oh, good to talk to you. Oh, nice. Headliner show. He's like, oh yeah, get it in there. This I is... love both of them. You can follow me at my Smith Corona typewriter. Uh, <laughs> I haven't progressed. Past a light bright in 1982. That's the most technologically advanced piece of equipment I use. And you are Mark Ellis. My name is Mark Ellis. <laughs> and you can actually follow me on Twitter at SchmoesNo, which conveniently is also the name of my movie show on YouTube. YouTube.com backslash SchmoesNo. <laughs> Call me when you're done with Twilight. <laughs> Because that's what, and you can try to deny it, but so many girls are into Twilight now. They love that shit, and it's killing it for guys like me. Because I'm not a bad boy. I'm not a vampire, nor a werewolf. All right? That's what all these little girls are choosing. Like, well, I have to date a bad boy. I have to date a guy that has tattoos and rides a motorcycle. I might beat the shit out of me at the end of the night. That's what I want. And just in case any of you women are ever actually in that position where you have to choose a vampire or a werewolf, what would you take? <laughs> she didn't miss a beat, by the way. She came in here with a Team Jacob pennant waving it around. You date the werewolf, that's the right move. Don't date a vampire, okay? Date the werewolf. Why? Because a werewolf is exactly like a woman. Right? You're normal most of the time. Then you have that one time of the month when you go batshit crazy for no reason. When he gets cramps when you wake up in the middle of the forest. Either way, there's a lot of blood involved. We don't want to deal with it. Minstrel joke, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> if I'm Bella's dad, she's fucking grounded for life, okay? If you bring home a vampire, then your next play is a werewolf? What's taking you to prom, bitch? The creature from the Black Lagoon? Stay inside for a weekend. And she's not marrying that vampire, you know why? Because if you date a vampire, you don't just date one vampire, you want to date every vampire, okay? You're going to date that one, you're going to date Bella Lugosi, George Hamilton. How is her white trash dad going to feel when she brings home Blade? <laughs> right. Oh, and he's a vampire? Jesus, Bella! Doesn't even so interested. <laughs> Nobody, nothing's quite as interesting as two guys spinning a yarn about how they formed their platonic friendship. I'm sure that's what she's tweeting about I, right now. I just now. need to do this, so hoping that the thumbnail for this video is a girl. Because yeah. that'll just increase the YouTube. I just need to film Justine just long enough. And it's like, surprise, it's dudes fucking talking. And hey, the thumbnail dude. isn't going to be that big, so they're like, what's she looking at? <laughs> yeah. Is she about to look frosting off her boobs? Yeah. Which it's actually, knowing Justine, that's, that could be a yes. That could be probable. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll say, I busted your chest about this, so I don't feel bad doing it now. But Please. I feel like your blade in the sense of the comedy world where you live that perfect life. Like you, I still don't know if I believe you. You say you grew up a fat kid. Yes. But now you're not fat. Thank and you. so, like, you're the comic that gets to tell relatable, true story, funny, fat jokes and still fuck chicks now. Like, you're not the fat guy that's like, well, being a fat guy is so hard. Like, I can't go up there and do those jokes. It's like, fuck you, you're never fat. But you sell it. You sell this lie of you being fat. I sell being fat because the 30 minutes of stand-up I do prior to talking about being a fat <laughs> kid involves such topics as pizza, Taco Bell, Chick-fil-A, not getting chicks. Uh, but yeah, and I actually used to think, because I am the blade of fat people, where I can walk in both worlds. Like, if I'm at a party, I can walk up to the fat people and talk about a great buffet. Then I can also go up to the single, the skinny people and be like, hey, I 
I play basketball, so I do everything. It's like a buddy of mine is a comic named Freddie Lockhart. He's half black, half white. Yeah. So he can joke about everything. He's very fortunate to do so. But and my parents were really, really white. It, it really, it's a confidence thing with me. That's, that's all it is. I started out life. I was a fat little kid. Is anybody else a fat kid here growing up? Right? Yeah, dude, you're skinny as fuck. You made it out. We read about you in the newsletter, man. Congratulations. I lost, so last year I lost 30 pounds. So I lost 30 pounds last year at 24 Hour Fitness. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, you did. Right? What time did you go? Look, when you're fat, do not go to 24 Hour Fitness, okay? Because there's never a good hour to work out at that gym. When you're overweight, right? You have two options. You either go in the middle of the night when it's just you in some nutcase wearing a Batman costume working out. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling you Robin the whole night, it gets kind of weird. Or you can go in the middle of the day, that's the worst time to go if you're fat because there's always crowded, there's lines, and it's always the good looking athletic people on the machines, right? And then it's like the four fattest people in the gym waiting for one to open up. If you're the fattest one at the gym, shouldn't you be awarded priority as soon as you walk into that place? the fattest one there you can go up to anybody using a machine like uh yeah excuse me <laughs> you're five percent body fat i'm five percent pizza hut off you go it doesn't you're training for a triathlon that's adorable last night i got drunk and ate a birthday cake by myself <laughs> And you know, like, when you're a fat little kid, life's kind of cool, right? When you're a fat little kid, because all we know is that we're the mayor of the Chuck E. Cheese ball tank. That's all we know. And the summers are even better because we make the biggest cannonball in the pool. And everybody's like, oh, that was a huge splash. That's awesome. Then you have that one skinny asshole who's like, how come you're the only kid in the water wearing a shirt? And you're like, don't worry about it, bitch. I'm packing thunder under this thing, all right? These might be boobs. They might be pecs. We don't know the difference yet. Then what happens, then you get a little bit older, okay? Then we realize we're different than all you skinny kids. Because fat kids, we didn't get a number for our pant size like everybody else. Oh, right? We had one term, husky. That's all we got. It's like they got tired of counting down to the pants factory. They're like 31, 32, 30, you know what? Fuck it, he's a fat wolf. We don't care anymore.